Okay, hi everybody, meteorologist David Paul with you with the Tropical Update. Ian is the only special feature out there right now. This is your Monday evening update. The hurricane has gone through a rapid intensification process during the day today on Monday. Winds are now sustained at 100 miles an hour. It's Cat 2. It's a middle of the road Cat 2. Cat 2 is 96 to 110 miles an hour, so we're at 100 get to 111 and it goes to cat three. And we think that's gonna happen tonight and tomorrow. Even though the center of the storm is going to cross over Cuba, the western end of it, the landmass there, this is very, very flat. And it does not look like it's gonna have much in the way of influencing any type of weakening process as it crosses over. Here's a closer look at the high resolution infrared uh, GO-16 satellite. We're not seeing an eye yet on the infrared. We are seeing a little better central dense overcast this evening but it hasn't wrapped all the way around. It's still a hurricane that is intensifying right now. And quite often we don't see an eye on a hurricane on infrared or on visible until it gets to major hurricane status. So even on the visible today, and we'll let this go one more time, from sunrise to sunset, hurricane increased from 85 mile an hour winds to 100 mile an hour winds today. No eye is apparent yet on visible. I expect that we will see that probably by tomorrow evening as it's done crossing over Cuba and gets into a position where it can continue to intensify. Now looking at the upper level wind profile, these are winds at 250 millibars up at about 34,000 feet. A couple of things. Number one, see the clockwise flow all the way around, well around the circumference of what is now uh, Hurricane Ian. So that is giving it upper level divergence or outflow at the top of the storm. That's like having a nice clean exhaust in a sports car. There's nothing stopping the engine from running. There's no banana in the tailpipe to stop the exhaust and shut the engine down. So that is one clue that yes, this is gonna to continue to intensify right now. It's in a very unsheared, not only unsheared environment, but a favorable environment. We've got outflow at all quadrants at the upper level. So we've got nothing to stop it from strengthening. Second thing is you can clearly see the trough being dug out here across the eastern half of the United States. It's this trough that is finally uh, helping to pull this to the north and the trough will eventually gather it up and pull it north and eventually into Florida at some point in Florida and then likely into Georgia and the Carolinas and maybe into the Virginias as we head toward the weekend and that may cause a flash flooding event uh, for you guys. So there's a lot of folks uh, taking interest in this, not just uh, folks here in the Gulf of Mexico. GFS versus Euro, what we've done is eliminated all the isobars. This is just the center of each of the runs. And the, uh, they both have very similar outcomes going uh, between now and Wednesday evening. The GFS is now a little closer. That's the 18Z run for Monday on the GFS. Brings it closer to Tampa Bay and Tampa. The Euro keeps it a little bit further offshore. And then as we go forward in time into Thursday and Friday, again, they're very similar outcomes, but the Euro keeps it just off the Gulf Coast of Florida. Uh, American model GFS does take it in over Tampa, then brings it inland uh, west, east of Cedar Key, west of Jacksonville, and up into Georgia as we head into Friday. There's basically no difference between these two runs. We're splitting hairs right now with how close they are together. And it's going to really now just be a, a matter of watching how this evolves moment to moment to see who's going to take the worst impacts as it will come down to just a few miles either way as to who gets the worst of the wind and the rain and the surge. Talking about the wind right now, this is our wind profile forecast. This is going into Tuesday evening. So uh, Tuesday evening, 730. You know, strong Cat 2, probably some Cat 3 winds in, winds in here as well by then. And then the storm does want to head northeast. Again, this is the 18Z GFS uh, on the wind profile. But what I want you to pay attention to is what happens here between midnight Wednesday night. This is Wednesday night into the wee hours of Thursday morning. So Thursday morning at midnight, 12 a.m., just beginning Thursday, you're already getting hurricane force winds across the coast, the bay into Tampa and Sarasota. But models have been fairly consistent in at this point, Wednesday night through Thursday, slowing down for maybe an 18 to 24 hour period, the speed, the forward speed of a storm. And that would do a lot of things. It would put you under these strong hurricane force winds for a much longer period of time. That would also allow for very heavy rain to pile up. Rainfall with a tropical system is a direct function of its forward speed. A storm moving at 10 miles an hour, divide 10 into 100, it goes in 10 times, you estimate about 10 inches of rainfall from a tropical system, whether it's a tropical depression or a full-blown hurricane. Doesn't matter the strength, it's the speed. 
So a storm moving at 10 miles an hour, you can divide 10 into 100, it goes in 10 times, you get about 10 inches of rain. So if a storm dropped down to zero miles an hour, you could get infinite rain. And you can see how at that point it doesn't matter if it's a hurricane or a depression or just a thunderstorm. If it just stays on you and doesn't move, you can get an infinite amount of rain. And this is forecast to slow down significantly. Thursday at midnight, the beginning of the day on Thursday. Now watch what happens. We'll move this forward. Thursday midnight, and we go to Thursday 4.30 in the afternoon. So 12, 16 and a half hours. And the center just really hasn't moved much. If this forecast verifies, and it's still an if, that would put a significant rain flooding event on top of a significant surge potential for the coast and inland areas on the west Gulf Coast of Florida, Tampa, Sarasota in particular. You would be on the dirty side, strong side, right next to the eastern eye wall for many, 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 many hours during the day on Thursday. It's just a possibility, but you need to understand that that is a possibility with this system. So who's going to get exactly how much rainfall is impossible to tell at this moment. Here's one example. This is the Euro and you can see widespread four to six inland. I think that's that's probably a good forecast. However, it is also like all the other models putting a swath of 10 to 20 inches of rain in some parts of this track. Just because this is offshore doesn't mean that 10 to 20 inches is going to be offshore. It could be inland. It could be South Florida. It could be uh, up toward Jacksonville. Uh, it could be up into portions of Georgia. We just don't know. But that's the potential. And we'll probably see some spots that get 10 to 20 inches. So the potential is also there from flooding from heavy rain, not just the storm surge, which is the rise in sea level elevation as a tropical system approaches. All that being said, here is the Hurricane Center forecast track. Uh, this is as of Monday evening. Uh, standing here right now, Cat 2, winds of 100 miles an hour. Crosses Cuba, doesn't weaken. In fact, it strengthens. And the Hurricane Center has this as a Cat 4 by Tuesday afternoon. Wind sustained at 130 miles an hour near the center. That's a low-end Cat 4. That's Tuesday afternoon at 1 p.m. Brings the storm here by Wednesday morning and then by Wednesday afternoon. This is Wednesday at 1 p.m. Sitting here not too far to the south and west of Tampa, Florida as a Cat 4. Again, winds at around 130 to 140 miles an hour. So now it's a moderate Cat 4 at this point. Tremendous counterclockwise rotation. At this point, we will probably see some surge, some rise in sea level between Fort Myers and Tampa. And we'll look at that wind flow here in just a moment. So again, this is so that that's the line where they're expected to be Wednesday one in the evening. We go into Wednesday night. This is about 10, 11 o'clock Thursday, uh, Wednesday night. That's when the storm cat for the center of the cone sitting just west of Tampa, Florida. But again, I remind you that when you look at this statistically, it is just as likely that the center of that storm will be 150 miles to the west or 150 miles to the east. That's about the size, the circumference of that part of the cone at that point. So I know it's it's difficult not to, but don't focus on the center of the cone. Statistically, it could be further west, could be further east. Oh, and one more thing. Statistically, the storm stays inside the Hurricane Center forecast cone 66% of the time. The other 33% of the time, it ends up outside the forecast cone. So this is where we stand right now. That's going into Wednesday night making landfall perhaps near Tampa, maybe north of Tampa Thursday morning, and then moving north, grazing St. Augustine, Jacksonville as a tropical storm, then up through Atlanta and into South Carolina, where Charleston could see some heavy rain from that as it weakens going into the weekend. It's the wind direction, the angle of attack, and how long this stays over open water that will determine the storm surge. And all those factors are in flux a little bit. It's too early to really sharpen the resolution on exactly how strong the storm surge is going to be, but I'm going to give you a generalization so at least you can begin to plan. We'll begin with the wind flow around the system. This is going into Wednesday morning, so Tuesday night, Wednesday morning at 3 a.m. So at this point, if the storm is here, you've got a lot of wind paralleling the coastline, and it may be that from Marco Island to Fort Myers, you're not having much of a surge by Wednesday morning. However, watch how this changes. Now, again, that's because the winds are paralleling See the coastline of western Florida right there. They're paralleling the coastline. Look at the difference going into 
Wednesday evening. So now it's onshore. So that's pushing water into the bay around Fort Myers, Marco Island. And then it remains to be seen how close the center is going to get to Tampa Bay itself, which as we know is very susceptible to surge flooding. Also, the closer you get to that center, and especially just the east, the strong side of the center, you're going to get a, you're going to get a bulge of water just move inland regardless of the exact wind direction. So at this point, Wednesday evening, I expect waters to be rising in Tampa Bay if this forecast verifies. And again, this is the GFS, just one of the model runs. That's Wednesday evening at 7.30, water rising on the coast near Tampa. We go into Wednesday by midnight, and you've got a violent, you know, perhaps Cat 3 hurricane sitting right off the coast of Tampa Bay. There's Tampa. Bay's right here. And at this point, this could be very, very interesting. I, I'm curious to see if it will pull water out of the bay or actually that will be pushing water up into the bay. My, my gut feeling is that if this were to verify with the center just to the southwest of, of Tampa and Tampa Bay, that you're going to see this pushing a lot of water up into Tampa Bay and a lot of surge flooding will be happening by Wednesday, late Wednesday night. But this is when it gets to its worst. Wind, rain, surge, Wednesday night, late Wednesday night into early Thursday morning. And going into Thursday, even by one in the afternoon, remember the whole system forecast to slow down. So there's the bay, there's the outline of the bay, and that's just shoving water right up into the bay. And this is when surge flooding could be at its worst, going into late Thursday morning, early Thursday afternoon. Doesn't move much going into 6.30 Thursday evening. But then after that, going into Friday morning, we begin to get some relief as the center moves further north. Pine Island and the Big Bend of Florida, you may have some moderate surge, maybe a couple of feet. But after that, it moves inland and then the surge threat will be over and things will begin to relax. And that's going to be Friday evening. So Wednesday night through the day on Thursday, that's when things may be at their worst for Tampa. If indeed that forecast verifies which skirts a Cat 3 or a Cat 4 right by Tampa and Tampa Bay. So again, it's too early to really get a high resolution forecast on this for surge. It's not even in the Gulf of Mexico yet. But again, if that forecast verifies or something close to it, absolutely, Sarasota to Tampa and further up the coast from Tampa could see 10 feet or more. That's just sea level rise. On top of that, you've got waves breaking on the coast and, and the debris in those waves is what can do so much damage. Further south, maybe not quite as bad. Uh, Sarasota down to Bonita Springs, eight feet. Again, that's rise in sea level with waves on top of that along the coast and the beaches. And you can see why this is so dangerous. Anything you know, below eight feet in those surge zones near the coast could be easily inundated. This is what causes most loss of life in a hurricane is this storm surge, this rise of water. From Manita Springs to Marco Island and further south, up to six feet of surge is expected. And for you guys, it's during the day on Wednesday that you would have your worst surge, again, if that exact forecast model were to verify. That is where we stand on Monday evening. Questions, comments, I read your comments. Thank you for leaving them. And uh, we will obviously keep you posted uh, through this entire Ian uh, storm event uh, across Florida and as it goes inland later on in the week.